Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 104, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton and uh, rushing to the finish, uh, we have Hayden with us as well. Hi, Hayden. Uh, good to be here, Anton. Um, so uh, we appreciate everybody that comes in live, um, especially because it means that we have to actually finish our tip before 12.05, which we did seconds ago. That's right. So we're going to be winging this. Uh, to, to, the origin of today's tip is um, uh, uh, is an actual problem that I had to solve. Yes. Uh, and I uh, decided to consult Anton about what my options were to imp for implementing. Yeah. And I like so often when I'm asked for help with something, I spend way too much time thinking about it. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I think we came up with some interesting stuff. So without further ado, Hayden, um, I'll share my screen. We'll kick off uh, the timer and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, how, to, how to dynamically, you know, change your page, what it, what it looks like, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So the, uh, the problem that I, that I came to Anton with was um, I want to selectively uh, make a column uh, available for input. Um, so th th the context was a form, um, and uh, as viewers may know, uh, you have fewer options for doing so with a column than you do with its a region that has its own line. Yeah. Well, let's kick off the timer, and we'll see what we can do in five minutes. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> so Hayden, when you first asked me about it, I said, well, obviously you can use a, uh, a server-side condition. So, you know, this button, I've got a server-side condition. If I push this button, the server-side condition gets rid of region three. If I push this button, yeah. the server-side condition gets region three. And, and, and we won't go into the mechanics of how that works because it's super obvious. I'm sure everyone understands it. The, but of course, like the context is a form. Uh, submitting a form is like not a, something that you want to do casually. And so... It's, it's probably not a good solution for my problem. Yeah. So uh, our next step was to talk about just hiding the, the column. So here we have a dynamic action, and people probably can figure out how we're doing this with a dynamic action. Yeah. Well, that looks and beautiful, doesn't it? You like it? I, I think it's awkward. <laughs> like, <laughs> whether you have uh, five columns, as you do here, or two columns, having the introduction of just white space that is that is unexplained doesn't work for me. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I think this is, is not great. Um, but it, the nice thing about this, inc incredibly declarative, right? If we, if we take a quick look at this page, um, I think we have time. Uh, we've got a dynamic action, and all we're doing is we're saying hide region three or show region three. Right. I mean, so easy. Um, yeah, functionally, it solves the problem. Yeah, OK. Um, so, uh, next, um, we've got, um, so, uh, so, so this is much better because it, uh, things, there's no awkward white space between uh, row, uh, R3 and R4, uh, sorry, R2 and R4. R4. So I, I like this. Um, uh, so what's the key difference between, um, the uh, hiding the region and hiding the column? Uh, so yeah, the key difference there is is just as you put it, it's the column. We're, we're hiding the column. So we have to have some access to the column itself to make this happen. And it took a little while for me to figure out how to do it declaratively. Um, and I'll show, if we have time, how you can do it sort of not as declaratively. But what I realized was this R3, um, you've got access here to the column classes, right? So yes, I this is so key. I, I think it's easily um, confusing to people that there are two different CSS fields at the region. So there's the this CSS classes, and then you have the um, column CSS classes. And what's the difference here? The help actually does explain it, but most people don't read the help. Right. Yeah. And so if we just put a, co a class on here, R3 column, and I know it's not absolute best practices to just make up a class and not have it do anything, but, but if we do that, now we have access to that column. So now I can hide the, the jQuery selector dot R3 column. And right. that is really the key to this is my ability to hide and show via the column. Um, and, and it so, fixes the layout problem. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So 
another approach would be, um, and this might not make sense for five columns, but if you only have two columns, how about um, expanding R2 to fill the space left by R3? Yeah, so there we go. So the same kind of thing, um, what we would do is we would get access to the column of R2 and R3. Um, and, and then once we have access to those, we have to play around with, um, uh, I'm just going to jump in here. We have to play around with the different classes that are on them. If you take a look in the, in the classes themselves, you'll be able to find this. Now, I'm going to show you, I actually started this by, instead of using these classes, I, I started by grabbing the parent. And this works just fine as well. Um, but, and, and Plamen has this, I actually, Plamen, I'm going to mention, I've got that right here. I'm going to talk about this, uh, Plamen's comment, um, after our little break, um, because it does the same thing as hide more or less. In fact, I've got that one hit, you know, listed right here. And it even just because Plamen brought it up, I even have it right here as an option, but it doesn't really matter. This is actually super declarative, right? And if I had put a class on region two, I could actually, instead of using JavaScript expression, I could, I could reference the class. The next one is probably the better approach. Yeah, I agreed. I, I really should have a class here. It's much easier. Um, but what I need to do is I need to remove the, the Cal2 class from region two because normally this class this has- 15 seconds. It's, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, well, okay. So we're going to skip right through. I need to remove Cal2, add Cal4, and then over when I do it this way, I need to uh, remove Cal4 and add Cal2. Um, so- I'm going to say we haven't even gotten to the best part of our tip. Yeah, our, our favorite solution has not even been discovered. <laughs> All right, total fail. Let's I'm going to blame. I'm going to give. Let's... I'm going to blame just a little bit on my willingness to respond to all the, the, the comments that came in along the way. So yeah. that's on me. Um, but let's jump to our favorite solution. Okay, um, yeah. we're going to just keep going. Um, yeah, so, so I, I've actually discussed this with a couple of people, and everyone likes the solution, th this final solution, the best. This is the one I go, I go with. Okay, I like this. Just yeah. gray it out, right? Yeah. Because so, now... so it makes the um, uh, it, it helps the viewer know that it theoretically could be an option. So it's, it's still information, but it removes the the interactivity. Right now, there's a couple of things that are tricky about it because you can't just gray it out. You also have to make these items not uh, not navigable and not editable. So you want to when they tab through, you want to skip past them, right? Yeah. You don't want you don't want it to jump on them, and you also don't want them to be able to click in them and and actually do anything in them. I can't, so they're read only. Um, yeah. So setting uh, the opacity is not enough. Yeah. So I'm going to show um, in the the 30 seconds that we have left. Um, <laughs> how we did that. Um, so uh, it's largely declarative. There's just a little bit of JavaScript. My first thing is to set the opacity and that's really easy. We just set the style opacity to 0.4 region and just dis dis describe the region and then set read only. What I'm doing here is I'm saying for all the items in that region, I'm setting the read only attribute to true and the tab index to negative one. I get to use this.affectedElements.attr right here. You can see I've got that help brought up for this very reason. Then when I show it, I take I do the opposite. I set the opacity to one and I set the editable. I set the read only to false and the tab index to null and everything goes back to the way it was. Um, nice. This is absolutely my, uh, my preferred visual for this. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it works no matter how many columns you have. So uh, it, it, uh, the number of columns obviously affects the solution, but, but I think regardless of the number of columns, this is the best approach. Yeah. Um, so I, I apologize to our, our army of viewers um, that we have gone over the time. Special extended tip. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> so, um, but, but I have a few related topics to this that I think are, are actually really sort of interesting. Um, and I don't know that they may really make up a tip, but um, all right, we're supposed to tell people like beat it if you're, if you yeah. came in for, for five minutes, so get out of here, like subscribe, tell your mom about it, all that stuff. I'm going to move right into uh, sort of this, this other, 
you know, interesting topic uh, that I think, and, and I, I promise not to spend more than five minutes on this. Um, Hayden, looking at this screen, there's a little bit of white space at the top right here. And there's no column there. There's nothing there. I know you know the answer. Why is there white space there? Well, uh, the uh, space is divided into 12 columns and you have five, which doesn't divide evenly into 12. That, that is it exactly. If you have one column, it divides into 12. One, two, three, four, and six all divide into 12, but five doesn't. So if you have five columns, you get this little bit of uh, white space, which when you go to the server side uh, side of things, um, when I hide this server side, it recalculates, you get all of you get all. Yeah. Um, so uh, that becomes a really, it, it becomes really interesting as you're trying to do any math with these kinds of things. You have to keep that in mind. This, this um, the idea that you have a 12 column layout is, um, is, is important. Um, and Apex provides a number of class type utilities that help with that. Um, these, these classes will do things like um, expand and contract. So you can see I've got 12 columns across the bottom. And this, is, this to me was confusing when I first started playing with it, but let me just show the effect. Uh, at the bottom here, as I go narrower and narrower, I get those columns start um, realigning. See what's going on there? And that's because the columns have these classes on them. It says that the regions have these classes, but that's not really accurate as we talked about, right? It's not really that the regions have these. If you put these classes in the region attributes, I'm gonna jump back to our, our other screen here. Um, when, if you were to put them in a region attribute, they would not work the way you expect them to. Um, those attributes, they don't go in your region classes, they go in your column classes. And that's a, a pretty key uh, point. But the other thing I'm just gonna spend a, a moment on is understanding the, uh, the language of these things. It's, it says cal XXX12, cal XS6. What, what do all these things mean? Um, and so, I, it, what it means is if, so XXS, XXS means if the screen is smaller than 479 pixels wide. And what it's saying is when the screen is less than that size, take all 12 columns, make this one column take up all 12. If mm -hmm. it's only this size, have this column take up six and then have this column take up five, three, and so forth. So when the screen is really wide, each one of these is only taking up one column. But as the screen gets narrower, each one of them takes up two columns. So here, now each of them is taking up two columns because the screen is just extra large. And then when the screen is uh, medium, each one of them will take up three columns. Um, took me a little while to sort of understand that. Um, so. These are all things you can play with, but these are really, these are really about responsive design. They're not about, they're not about hiding a, a column entirely the way we're, we're doing in, in this case. Um, right. So, um, and, I, and actually I, on I, that subject, um, if you want to stick with the um, universal theme application, one path that I perhaps rather erroneously went down was uh, by going to the uh, layout modifiers under reference. Mm -hmm. And I was, so for in experimenting with um, uh, modifying the width of the columns, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you'll find um, the uh, W amount. Yeah, so um, essentially the, one hack is if you're working with a space that is less than 800 pixels wide, which is the case when you have five columns, you can prescriptively set the width so long as you're not trying to go above 800 pixels uh, to fill the space. But it's, um, it's a bit of a blunt and highly imperfect solution because then you're manually setting the pixel um, pixels and, and not being responsive. And then, yeah. It's no longer responsive. Um, 
So all of that said, um, these are great utilities, but in the end, in the end, we started with, oh, how do we resize the column? And we came up with, I don't even want to resize the column. I like this. I just like this solution better. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Well, uh, I guess that is our, uh, our show. If, uh, if you like the show, like the show. All right. Um, good talk to you, Hayden. See you next week. Have a good weekend.